in the first place. And then confidence, even when um, sometimes you have to build that within yourself through whatever means, um, music, just going after what you believe in and seeing what happens. Confidence is super important. So whatever you can do to build that confidence um, and funny enough, to build your confidence, you're going to have to fall down. You're going to have to fail. And then you win through the failures and you're, and then that builds your confidence. So those, that's why those two stand out. You're listening to the First Class Life Show hosted by Lindsay Vertner, a holistic personal development show for high achieving leaders who desire to maximize their impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, and let's get started. beautiful people. Welcome back to another episode of the First Class Life Show with your host, Lindsay Vertner. That is me. And I'm super, super excited for today's guest because you're going to love her. I love her. She's one of my favorite women. And we had the opportunity to meet a couple years back and we've been connected ever since. And she just does amazing things. And her story is awesome. And listen, I know that y'all got busy lives to live and you are spending your time here with us today. So we're just going to hop right in the conversation, and I want to introduce you guys to the beautiful Keisha Zulo. Hey! I would break out my pom-poms, Lindsay Vertner, but I don't know if your audience is ready for that. Listen! I'm I'm kidding. (laughs) Yes, yes. I'm that type of person. I got, I have pom poms. Whatever it takes to get my motivation and my energy up, I have it next to me, just in case. Hey, well, we love it because we love energy, we love motivation, and all of the good things. So I like to sometimes call myself professional hype woman. <laughs> yes, that you are. I was just saying to you um, before that your energy is always on a hundred, and I am hopefully going to match your energy on this call. <laughs> I don't have no worries. So I know all of the phenomenal things that you do and a little bit of your background, but can you share with our first class family, like, who is Keisha? Give us the good juicy tea, like, peel back the curtains and let us know. Who are you, girl? So um, that is such a big question. When you asked me that, I thought, where do I go with it? What do I tell them? Do I tell them I'm Jamaican? I was born and raised there. Do I tell them my favorite color is yellow? <laughs> I was like, where do I go? So I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. You know that for work. Um, but I think the thing that I would want people to know is that I really am here to serve and be of service. I am, you know, um, a widow. I am a stepmom I'm to an amazing daughter who is now 19. Um, she's been in my life since she was a year and a half. So I call her my daughter. And we don't look anything alike. So when people see us, <laughs> they're like, what's your daughter? <laughs> Curious. Um, and let's see. I have an amazing family that just loves and supports me. I love to be around people who are positive and moving forward. You know, talking business and entrepreneurship gets me super excited. What else do you want to know, Lindsay Vertner? <laughs> <laughs> Now, you mentioned that you are a widow because, yes. you know, here on the First Class Live show, we often talk about the things that people don't want to talk about, the things yeah. that make us uncomfortable, those obstacles and those struggles that we go through in life that essentially make or break us sometimes. And it's important that we are acknowledging those moments and uh, to lose someone and not only someone, but your spouse. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that that was a tough time and i hate to just you know i know didn't we talk about high energy lindsey partner (laughs) well i say that because it it, i can finally accept that now that's a part of who i am because it's Mm -hmm. really shifted the the person i am and how i look at life and how i look at interactions with people and how i make decisions about my business so I have to mention it because it, it was huge. It was sudden loss. It was seven years ago, um, you know, and I and he was my best friend. We had known each other since we were 20 years old. 
I'm in my late 40s. Don't mind sharing. I won't give you the exact number because that's not your business. But <laughs> you know what I mean? So he was my best friend. I'd known him for, you know, a very, very long time. Our lives went in separate directions and then we came back together. Um, and someone who was truly my friend first before any, I mean, I'm talking decades before we even thought of a relationship. And so then, you know, we got together, got married, we're together for 10 years. And then I get the worst call of my life. And you know about this, you know about the sudden, um, because of your experience, Lindsay, of how life just shifts all of a sudden. And you are not prepared. And I was not prepared. I wasn't emotionally prepared. I wasn't financially prepared. I wasn't any kind of prepared. And then I have this amazing daughter who at 12 years old is losing her papa. So I, <laughs> a lot of learning. So seven years, I can talk about it without crying as much. Um, I still, you know, it's still fresh for me. And I, I understand the grieving process much more than I did. You know, you say people to see people, I'm sorry for your loss. And you mean that sincerely. But when you get this gut punch um, that you did not expect, and then I, you know, got anxious about, well, how am I going to deal with loss of any kind? Because I can't really, you know, deal with this. So it's something that I am still working through, but I can share with people. Yes, I'm a widow. And it, um, I don't know what else to say about that, but it has really shaped me in a very good way. And it, it's let me know that God is real and uh, that there are angels in place, unexpected places that um, can lift you up at the most random time when you need it. And it's it's so there's beauty in the pain <laughs> and there's power and there's power in the pain because then I had to just fortify myself and say, okay, you have a business to run. You now have to keep things going at the house and all of this. So, you know, it's all good. <laughs> you can, you, God knows what you can bear. So I guess, you know, that's, that's what's happening. I'm bearing and moving and, and learning and growing. So. Mm -hmm. And so there's two things that I want to point out that you mentioned. One that you said it was seven years ago, but it's still fresh and you're just kind of yes. getting to that point because I know recently, especially with the pandemic, a lot of people have suffered loss. And yes. even prior to that, you know, losses all around us. And yes. I feel like the older I get, the more and more people that it's like, oh, I lost somebody just yesterday. And then next month, it's somebody else losing somebody. Mm -hmm. But I often see, especially with social media, how people are like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm still grieving or you, just the comments mm -hmm. like, why? It's been a year. You should be fine. Time. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Time will help you heal and get over Ooh. it. And it's like, that, that's not really a thing because recovery is an ongoing journey. That right. grieving is an ongoing journey and you don't really get over it. It's more that you learn to move forward with it because mm -hmm. it becomes a different piece of you. And really time doesn't heal anything. It's, it's what you do with the time that you have that you, does the healing. <laughs> right. You hit the, the nail on the head. And if I could offer any advice to anyone who is, a, who is, around someone who's grieving what things to say and not to say first of all no it's different for everyone it looks mm -hmm. different for everyone do not judge someone's path if you see someone like rebounding fast or would that's their business the best thing you, you can do is to just say how are you today mm -hmm. and then listen because they will tell you how they are i will tell you you know i will say it how are you today and then let them just share how they are. And then the advice you can, you know, just be there. I had a friend, I talk about Tara all the time because it was just incredible. And she's just one example of many who just every day I would come home and there's a gift at my door, flowers, mm -hmm. gift cards. Can you imagine, you know, and it was just, she didn't ask me for anything. She didn't expect me to reply to her. She did not, she just kept doing it. And then when I was able to say something about it to her, and that's why now I'm still seven years talking about her because I really appreciated just that show of love and my family just for standing in my little sister. I remember we were, um, and I know we, we need to go in a different direction soon, but I just want to share, you know, my family was so cool because my little sister, I remember we were at the hospital and I was numb, you know, I was number numb for a very long time. And my little sister just went shopping at target. She bought me cause I needed to stay close to the hospital. 
Mm-hmm. And um, she brought, just went and got everything that I needed. She didn't even ask me. She already knew my size. So she just, you know, bought me what I needed for, for the overnight stay. Um, and it was, it was fast. It was, it, he uh, passed away as a result of a car accident. And I remember my other sister just, um, she made all the reservations. My mom, of course, you know, the queen herself, she was incredible. Just everybody did. I didn't have to ask. And that's all you need to do when you have someone who is grieving, just show up for them. And, you know, it's not a matter of what do you need? Just watch, just anticipate what would you need in this situation? Would you need something to laugh at? Would you need, um, uh, and when it comes to food, gift cards or to restaurants are best <laughs> rather than cooking and trying to, cause there's no, there was, I had no ref, um, space in my freezer, Lindsay, for all the food <laughs> that I was receiving. I was like, this is wonderful, but where am I going to put it? So if I could yeah. just offer those little nuggets about how to help someone going through that, um, and then, you know, for your own life, just prepare for the unexpected, always have an emergency fund. Um, because listen, when I tell you we were making plans for the summer, we were just, you know, plans for that day. And mm-hmm. then just like that, our lives changed. So, you know, that's it. But you move on and you, you hold on to those moments that make you laugh and, you know, even the crying moments are good because you're just getting it out and you're, you know, you're, you're making the best of the life that you have, which is so precious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for letting me share. I didn't know we were going to talk about that in detail, <laughs> but I appreciate you because maybe that'll help someone else going through something similar. You know, we go wherever we're <laughs> led to go. Okay. And, yeah. you know, there's something that you mentioned about, you know, all of the people showing up for you. And yes. I think that's important to understand as leaders, whenever yes. you are leading, whether you have a company or whether you're in the spotlight or, you know, even if you're just the lead in your house household, lead in your family, yeah. leading your church community or, you know, wherever it is, because we are all leaders in some mm-hmm. right. But whenever you are making a difference and making an impact in the lives of others, yes. whenever it's time for you to need that help, people rally around and they have no issue showing up for you. Yeah. And a lot of times us as leaders, we're the ones that have the issue asking for help. Yes. No. <laughs> Exactly. I am. A, I will do it. My I'm Jamaican. So, you know, we, we need multiple jobs. <laughs> we need to do things ourselves. I don't you know. It's just a thing. And I was raised by a very strong single parent. So she, I watched her do everything herself. So I thought, you know, Same. I got this. Didn't know you need help. <laughs> you need yeah. Help. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that because it's true. As leaders, we're like, it's our responsibility. We will mm-hmm. take care of it. And, you know, we need help too. Everybody does. So it's yes. a good point, so Lindsay. In this specific instance, I know that you mentioned that you were numb. And so you, you were just kind of there and like everybody just showed up and started yes. doing for you without you even asking. Um, but what advice would you share as far as being able to accept that help whenever you're a leader? I would say just surrender your... Um, surrender everything. I had to surrender my house <laughs> because people, I just let the doors open. People were coming in and coming out. Um, my mother-in-law, she was incredible. Uh, she is still incredible. Um, she stayed with me for six weeks or something. I, I don't know, yeah. for a long time. And we wouldn't say much to each other because that's, you know, her only son. So yeah. we wouldn't um, say much. We, you okay? You're good. <laughs> <laughs> and we go to our rooms and, you know, so that was nice. And like I said, my foundation. So you would ask me, what advice do I have? Say it again, the question, Lindsay, because I now I, I don't want to go off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go off on a tangent. So specifically. To help leaders accept help. Accept help. Surrender. That's the word. Surrender your house. Surrender um, how you think things should be done, especially if you're a perfectionist. And someone comes in, right, you know, well, she didn't clean it the way I just surrender, surrender. I love that. Because then you can spend time just dealing with yourself. I was listening to um, Tiffany Aliche, the budget Nista. Do you follow her on Mm -hmm. Instagram? Mm Yes. So she just recently had a loss of her husband. And the thing that I was so impressed by, she was like, I left for two months to Bali. Now, not all of us can leave for two months to Bali. 
But if you are fortunate enough to have a community of people willing to help you pick up the pieces, just let them just surrender and let them because you're going to appreciate it so much more on the back end. When you look back, how did I even do that? I did not do those first crucial months by myself. My Mary Kay family showed up for me. As you know, I'm a Mary Kay beauty consultant. And that year I chose to go to our large conference in Dallas. And we were all, I remember, you know, cause it's a girl, it's total girlfriend time. We do each other's makeup. We give fashion advice. It's, it's really, really girly. It's a giant mm-hmm. sleepover. So we're in the <laughs> hotel room and we're all getting dolled up to go, you know, to the conference. And I just burst out crying. Lindsay, like everybody, the mood is happy and high and I'm like like, (laughs) sobbing uncontrollably. And I remember Abby just grabbing me and squeezing me and just, um, you know, just letting me sob in her clothes. And I Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh my gosh. So you never know how um, important those moments are until you look back. So I would say surrender and receive the help graciously and don't think that, oh, it's not being done my way. Just, just let people help you. Yeah. And, and I know there's some discernment there too. Cause there's some folks that like, I, I was, re- <laughs> now I'm really going to get into it. There's some folks <laughs> who said some, <laughs> no, no, they said some things to me. I'm like, mm, not now. I literally <laughs> had to block some people out because they were projecting a little bit mm-hmm. um, about how I should get on with my life and move on, you know, and why aren't you dating and all this other stuff. And I'm like, woof, girl. So, I know they. I know they meant well, so I won't beat them up too much. But just that's why I said, listen more than you talk. Yeah, because you never know. That is so good. <laughs> Are you loving the first class live show? Then join our private Patreon community. Not only will you help to support our ability to provide you with great content, but you can also get exclusive perks like bonus videos and resources, discounts, episode transcripts, and more. So what are you waiting for? Join today at patreon.com forward slash first class life. Again, that's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash first class class life well, and I know they're gonna be like did I say that <laughs> no I love you all like, is she talking about me <laughs> right right no I love you I'm not talking about you <laughs> this time <laughs> so, so yeah. I know specifically we were talking about surrendering yes. and, you know, like the situation of grief but even just in general as a leader because I can think back so whenever I was doing an international retreat yeah. And the first time that I actually had a full assistant with me present, like it was very hard for me to just let her do things. And by the end of the week, I had gotten it. But it took me yeah. some time still. Like I had to remind myself, Lindsay, she is here for a reason. Lindsay, she's here to yes. help you. And like, cause she would, you know, be eager to handle this. Like I would start to do it. She'd be like, no, 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 I got it. And so like, I had to tell myself like, let go and let yeah. her so you can walk in your genius. Like she's here to help and let her help. And so it applies to all of the areas that we go through as leaders is just being willing to surrender and letting go of control. Cause yeah. we know it's our babies. It's, it's, oh my it's gosh. Life. Right. It's and life. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. I mean, this year we had Web Summit. I'm so proud of it because for many reasons, the Women in Business Summit, we'll talk about it more, I know. But mm-hmm. it's an event that I, you know that I planned that you were a fabulous speaker who came in 2018. Yes. So you you know all about WIP. This year, and I have in the past, but this year coming back out of being virtual for two years, we were live this year. And it felt so incredibly good, Lindsay, to just let Adam be the on-site event planner, if you will. I sat down, I had lunch, you know, cause normally I'm an event planner. So I'm all over the place checking everything. It was so nice to be able to say to Adam, can you make sure all of this is getting done and just have someone do it? And I didn't have to worry. And he felt great because he was a new grad and, you know, and I know we're going to work together again. You know, he was with me just for that event, but it felt so great to trust and let go and, 
I can't wait to do it more and let people learn through the process as someone trusted me when I was coming up, you know, in the event planning world and made my many mistakes, fell on my face a lots of times. And one of my uh, most amazing bosses, she let me fall on my face and then wasn't <laughs> critical, you know, didn't fire me. <laughs> and, you know, it was recoverable and I moved on. And I learned from the experience. So that's that's the, the, the beauty and the gift that you're giving someone else like you did with your assistant. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. And even just thinking about how you said you you got to enjoy the conference. Mm -hmm. I had put on a women's empowerment conference for three yeah. years in a row and we were yeah. you know, going to do that fourth one. And then the pandemic hit and yeah. everything. And uh, so we had phenomenal speakers all three of those years. Yeah. And as much as I wanted to enjoy them. I couldn't be in like sit down and enjoy mode because I'm managing all the pieces. Like even with a partner there, it was still like, all right, got to make sure this speaker's good. These attendees is good. The vendors are good. The lunch is going to be all right. Like, and you know, constantly right. all the things. And so you don't get to sit down and really take in all these amazing mm -hmm. people that you've brought together. Yeah, very true. And so I, I'm still learning. I can't say I'm perfect at it. But I felt I was giving myself a pat on the back for taking the giant step of just letting it let, you know, you've assigned it, walk away, mm -hmm. stop checking on it. Like, you don't have to worry. Just believe that it's already done. And if it wasn't, then you would find out. Right. So, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. Yes. Now. We're talking about your women in business, which is amazing. Thank you, love. The link <laughs> for that will definitely be in the show notes. So make sure you check it out because it's awesome. Yes, and you. earlier you had mentioned, you know, you had to keep running your business in the middle of this loss. And so that was the other thing that I wanted to bring up. Like, here you are, this leader, you have your businesses to run your event planning business because you were already doing the conference at that point right. as well because right? you're right. like you're in the teens with your right. years 15, right. 16, right yeah we're going into year 18 which is wow nuts. oh my god i know i was a baby when i had this crazy idea <laughs> yeah we're, we're turning so, 18 next year it's gonna be really fun oh that's gonna be a big celebration yeah. you have to because 18 is like you got you know 13 yeah. 16, 18 21 like <laughs> right. You know, so we have to we have to celebrate. This one is going to be very much fun. I mean, we always have fun. You know, we dance and we have our mm -hmm. DJ and all of the things that we do while we're learning. But yeah, next year, I'm excited. We've already started planning. We just wrapped the 17th um, on whatever day it was, May 18th. Seven, it's over. It was last month. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's on to the, the 18th. So. Yes. So whenever you are a leader and you have these roles and then you're hit with something so life changing, mm -hmm. how do you show up still? Because oftentimes, mm -hmm. you know, we Great either question. feel obligated to still show up or, you know, we force ourselves to still show up. So how did yeah. you show up in this time? Um, because I had to uh, and because I love what I do. I. I just threw myself into work. Um, my Mary Kay business is so fluid that uh, are so it was so good to be able to have customers that I built um, today. Actually, oh my gosh, Lindsay, today is my 13th anniversary of being <laughs> a beauty consultant. I, it just dawned on me. So yes, yeah, today is uh, 13 years, and I it was on a whim. You know, direct sales, as you know, it's an interesting business because <laughs> we both. <laughs> been a part of um, the direct sales world. And, but the thing with my Mary Kay business that I love is that the, the founding principles, God first, family second, career third, like your faith is first, mm -hmm. uh, family second, career third. So I really took advantage of that in the first few months. And then I said to um, my recruiter, my director at the time, I said, you know, all right, let me just set a goal for myself and keep going. So being able to show up is because number one, you had, I have to, their bills to be paid. And because I loved what I did, I threw myself into work. That was, I don't want to say it was my therapy, but it was my way of coping with mm -hmm. keeping my grief at a distance. Now there, I should say there's danger in doing that because if you're not dealing with it, it's still there. And I, okay. but I'm at the point where I finally think, you know, therapy is the next step of walking through how I'm feeling about just life in general. 
I think that's that would be a good step for me next. But my, I love what I do. I love being an event planner. I love supporting my nonprofit clients and my corporate clients in their events. You know, I'm working on an event that uh, is coming up in September that's so much fun. And I love when I have a client who just lets me do my thing. This is 25 <laughs> years of experience. And he's like, yes, okay, talk to Keisha, do this. And I, I'm like, <laughs> yes, this is my ideal client because... He's trusting me to make sure that his very important event, you know, in September is successful. And I love digging into the details. So because I love what I do as an event planner and because I love my Mary Kay business and because it gave me such a great outlet to still be creative, to still be around joy and fun, which is so important. I could not. Like if, if I kept myself into a cocoon, Lindsay, you would you would be talking to a very different person. So, you know, yes, there are times that I retreated and I didn't want to see anyone. But then I said, you know, I have to surround myself with joy. I remember that same week or a week later after my husband passed away, my sister was graduating with her doctorate. And my other sister from Canada came down and we were having a family celebration. So, you know... And now I know, um, you know, the things, the holidays were new and different. So all you life is going to keep moving. It's just how you choose to show up in it in, in spite of all the, the crazy, the storms, because we're never without storms. And hopefully you get enough breaks between the storms. But, you know, looking at when you mentioned COVID earlier, I was thinking that I was thinking about families who lost, you know, mother, father, all of all the storms came at once for that person. And so, yeah, that's how you you show up. <laughs> it's just you do you because you have no choice. Um, and if you do have the choice, like, you know, Tiffany Alici, uh, the budget Nista, she had the choice because she had built a solid foundation for herself that allowed her to step away from everything for two months. And I'm loving being a mentor of hers, you know, a mentee, I should say of hers, because she's, she's sharing so much gold about how to construct your ideal life and what you do with first class life and talking about, you know, going away to Bali and having these amazing experiences. I'm like, yes, Lindsay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes to all of that. You know, it's super cool and important. And I love that you said that, you know, life moves on because mm-hmm. oftentimes, especially when we're going through obstacles, when we're going through the storm, we can feel like, like, this is the end. Like, <laughs> there's nothing left. Like, I'm not going to make it. But right. life is moving on. But it's what we do with that life. Yeah. And how you mentioned, you know, you had this passing and then your sister's graduating at the same time. It made me think of when my grandma passed away, yeah. um, whenever I was in high school, like the very next week, my nephew was being born. And and so it was like the death and the life all at the yes. same time. It's like on one end, you want to be excited for this new child. On the other end, you're grieving the loss of this, yes. this person that was close to you. Exactly. And so what do you do? You just, you ride the wave and you figure it out because you're blessed to still be here to figure it out. Your story is incredible. <laughs> you know, what you went through and what you continue to share and that huge smile. Like if, when I think of you, I'm like, I think of energy and I think of that huge smile of yours. And, that, and, and then I know your story. So I'm like, and she's still smiling and she's still going and she's still inspiring. I'm like, that's what you do because the alternative to me just feels wrong. It's like, it doesn't feel like life. Um, and, you know, so... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That makes me think of, you know, like when we're going through things, once we get over that mountain and we get to the other side, like we have to be willing to share our experiences because it's like you got through it for a reason. Now it's time for you to take what you've been through and help someone else get through, even if it doesn't look exactly the same. Like there's things that you learn that you can use and utilize to help others. Absolutely. I I do believe in passing it on. Even in my event world, I get a lot of questions from, you know, new to the career, folks who are new to the career of event planning. I share as much as I can with my customers who are, um, you know, doing just an inquiry to find out if if we're a good fit. 
and they tell me about their event. And I said, well, think about this and that. Um, so absolutely with Web Summit, when it first started, the idea was passing on knowledge. So the title was really long. It was Women in Business, Passing the Baton Today, Tomorrow and Beyond Summit. Girl. <laughs> I was like, let's shut that down a little bit. So now it's just Web <laughs> Summit. And we had actually, we were handing out batons to our, our speakers and as a reminder to keep passing it on because that's how you find out information that can be life changing. It could be one, that one little nugget that you need to make it through your day to, you know, make a, a very important decision. You never know. So I try my best, um, to be that way for my clients and for people that I meet and, to your point, I've been talking a lot more than I used to. I used to just not want to talk about what happened. Um, but now if people ask, I do. I share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that you are sharing. And <laughs> I swear, y'all, listen, listen, family, okay? Me and Keisha have been on the same wavelength of energy because <laughs> if you're not watching us via video right now, we both have on black and white. Right? We both have Raise in completely unplanned, and yes, <laughs> do that, but this was different. And look, and I just noticed we both Our got lip on color. Lip. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't gonna say it, Lindsay, but um, we are wearing similar lip colors. <laughs> Is yours pink? Mine's like this courageous pink color. That Mine's I love. like it's like a dark pink. That yeah, see, this is mine. Red. <laughs> I have it right on my desk, so I can reapply. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's within hands reach. Yes, exactly. It's like right right on, right on my desk. Oh my <laughs> god. I brought that up because you had started to talk about, you know, the purpose behind Web Summit. And I yes. definitely wanted to ask you what made you want to start the Women in Business Summit? And you already started to feed into that. Yeah. So that was perfect. We're on, we're on the same wavelength. Um, so it was started because of an experience with a, a male coworker. He, we were just ch chatting after work and he shared how much he made and it was significantly different than my salary with similar experience, background, all of that. So mm -hmm. then I started to think about work because I was raised to believe that you just do the work, you follow the rules and you, you, you advance. <laughs> That's not the case. You know, I, I learned that later than probably I should. Um, cause it would, I would have been able to save a lot of, um, or earn more, first of all, because there's a couple of things that I want to say. I want to say that entrepreneurship for me is the, the gateway. If you're not making your salary to, to go in that direction, because you can significantly change your salary that way. Your mm -hmm. first salary sets the pace for the remainder of your salaries, unless you've changed your life and career significantly. So I was just looking at the landscape and having this nagging question as I'm driving into work. You know, I thought about it over the weekend and it was when right as I launched Events of Joy, which is my event planning company. And I thought, you know, I should plan an event for women that bring other successful women together so they can share how they were able to navigate things like salary, their personal development image, um, you know, so that's what started with. And it, and then I thought, I don't know. I know I have event planning down, but we're going to need support and resources. So how do I get sponsorships? Well, I knew a girlfriend and my sister at the time. She worked for a Fortune 500. So I was like, oh, they, they definitely could sponsor. So I brought together these amazing 10 women. They all said yes. And we just launched into it, um, all volunteer. And we launched the first one. And it was a brunch on a Sunday. And from feedback, they were like, you're competing with God's day. So no, <laughs> you know, yeah, I have to move it from Sunday. So we went from a brunch, you know, half a day to a full day conference. And, you know, I, that's what started it all. It was just wanting to be able to provide a platform to, for women to come together, to grow personally and professionally and learn from other women's who, women who they admire or women who have are at a place in their career or their personal life or some kind of growth that they can share those things with someone else. Um, how to communicate better, just so many different things. And now we're solidly focused on helping the female entrepreneur grow um, personally and professionally. So a lot of the, the classes that you'll see for next year 
will be around entrepreneurship because there are so many women who have a side hustle, if you will, but a business. Mm -hmm. And it could be the business that saves you in a situation like a pandemic. And look at the numbers of employment during the pandemic. There were, and it was immediate. And in my industry, the hospitality industry, I think within two weeks or a month or something, we were 6 million unemployed. People were furloughed. And do you yeah. think that the bills stop or, you know, that you no? And so it's important for me to help serve in this way because I feel like you always need um, a plan B. I feel that you, you can build something that's solid from the beginning. As, to, as far as a, a small business, let me help you to do that or, you know, through the people that I bring to the conference. And I'm just, I, I'm so excited. I'm excited, Lindsay, from 17 years ago to today. Last night, I met this incredible woman. She's in her 20s, Natalia. And I'm telling you, she just relit. Not that I needed the fire to be relit, but she just got me going because, I mean, this woman was fighting a huge personal battle. And then she's mm -hmm. talking about helping small businesses grow. I was so on fire. I'm like, okay, let's go. This is why we do what we do. It got me so amped up. I was so excited. <laughs> do you want to be surrounded by other high achieving women who are working on their goals just like you? Are you looking for your circle that's passionate about their own growth yet still wants to see you shine? Do you desire to be supported through collaborations and connections instead of competition? then Cowork & Chill is your place to be. Cowork & Chill is a hybrid of virtual co-working and virtual networking. It's a community of women who are striving to build living legacies. This is the space to create meaningful relationships with other equally yoked women where you're being poured into just as much as you pour out. So if you're looking for your crew for support of accountability, then sign up today at coworkandchill.com. That's C-O-W-O-R-K-A-N-D-C-H-I-L-L, coworkandchill.com. And that just means you're walking in your purpose because I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of work putting on an event um, and, you know, a growing event and, you know, <laughs> serving the people and to still be passionate about it yes. 18 years later. Oh. Like that just really means that you are fully walking in your purpose. I believe so. I believe this was not me, you know, my, my design. I believe that it was from God. I truly, mm -hmm. I finally have said it out loud and accepted it that this has nothing to do with me because things will just show up. And I'll be in the right place and meet people or I'll get a call from a potential sponsor. We saw your event. We want to, I'm like, oh, I didn't, you know? So if you are someone who has an idea, just go for it. I've spoken to executives who are looking at their relaunch when they retire and they're thinking, oh, I want to be a life coach. I want to do this. And so our conference has helped those women decide where to start because you can have the passion and know what you want to do, but then there are these other things that you're maybe not great at or don't are not interested in doing um, that someone else can help you with. And another thing I've learned, Lindsay Vertner, is that I can hire someone to cut my grass. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I was telling you about surrendering? <laughs> I was trying to do everything. <laughs> this summer, I was like, uh, a friend of ours said he would help, and I said, absolutely. Let's talk about it. Blessing. Clapping. Blessing. The next thing I have to work on is um, increasing my income so I can have someone as a housekeeper. I have a list. I have a first class life list. List. Okay. Listen, and that's what you need. Okay. And let me tell you, I will be the first one to say because my husband and I we had a, a little a little tit tit for that <laughs> whenever I first did it, but. I know for me personally, hiring a housekeeper, um, you know, it took a while to get there because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I can do this myself, you know, why well, I'm gonna pay somebody else. Right. But but once you start to grow and understand that your time is important, your freedom of time is important. And I don't like cleaning. I keep it clean because I have to, but I don't like cleaning. Whereas there's other people where cleaning is relaxing to them. Oh my and, gosh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, like it gets, it's, my sister, my baby sister is one of them. 
she loves an organized space. So when I was in, uh, when she was in grad school and I lived in Washington, D.C., she'd come to my apartment, Lindsay, and I'd leave it messy. Because <laughs> I know that by the time I got home, everything was neatly organized. I'm telling you, this woman can know in her closet where the blue T-shirt is, uh, in what drawer, how many rows down. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I am not that. So I would leave and I would come back and my apartment would be spotless. I'm like, ah. Oh. So, yes, to your point, <laughs> why not? So really that nice. responsibility. Yes. And not only is it allowing someone else to walk in their gift and serve yes. them, but you're also feeding the economy. Um, but you are able to do something that you enjoy or yeah. work on something that you want to work on while you're allowing somebody else to walk in their gift because we're all meant to work together. Um, yeah. But what I was going to mention was that it actually was not ex- as expensive as I was making it seem. And that's kind of part of that subconscious limiting belief of, you know, holding ourselves back from the things that we truly desire. Like we put these limits on it and it's like, well, how do you know how much it really costs? Have you actually ever checked how much it really costs? And then once you actually check, it was like, hmm, I spend that on just eating out. Like I can do that. (laughs) Right, right. So I literally have a list of these are the things I'd w- want my to include in my life. And I believe when you write it down and you look at it, because um, I have I have it on my list as landscaping. And I ha- I've had that on my list for probably six years, just looking at it. I never I was out there mowing the lawn, <laughs> weeding. <laughs> like I'm not and not to say that, you know, I have someone who's he's fully doing it, but the, it was. It was all God because he just said, hey, I see your lawn. I, I low key, I really think he was like, oh, <laughs> and he's like, you know, here's my rate. And would you be interested? And I said, uh, yeah. And then the feeling of just coming back. I sit in my backyard now, which mm-hmm. and that brings me so much peace. So I'm grateful and I keep I, and I keep saying, you know, thank you, God. Can I please have more? Like, thank you yes. for being able to at this season because, and it's not, Lindsay, I don't want any, anybody to think, oh, she's out here ball. You know, I'm not balling y'all. It just, in that instant, in that moment, it was a huge blessing. Mm-hmm. And don't discount yourself from the blessing because you, you have this made up number. Find out if there's something that you want to take off your plate, especially if you're running a household. Like my daughter, mm-hmm. she's 19. I don't, you know, I can't imagine sm- having small kids. Like during the pandemic when moms had to, homeschool and they were entertainment <laughs> flashbacks. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> when these are they had to do all of these things. Wouldn't it be helpful to have hired, being able to be in a position to hire someone to be able to take that off so we can, I mean, like you said, if, if it's business wise, live in your genius or just to have a break, mm-hmm. just have a break you know, for no other reason. I don't want to do it. So I want to break someone else do it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Just a break for any of the leaders that serve as mothers or even fathers, because guys and dads too, yeah. as well. So uh, don't be afraid to have that babysitter just because you need a break, not because you got to go to work, not because you got to run errands, Insane. but because you want to take a nap, or right. because you want to go have a margarita. <laughs> want to go take a walk in the park like <laughs> yeah no but yes 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 don't be ashamed listen this didn't i tell so y'all fun. that the lovely keisha was going to be amazing and this I is knew, so fun y'all were gonna love her just as much as i did so now are you up for a game oh yeah let's play a game mm-hmm. let me get my handy day do i need pen and paper i have it handy Nope. <laughs> All right. Okay, I was ready to go. So this is real simple. It's called First Class Favorite Things, okay? okay. So I'm going to say what's your favorite fill in the blank, and you're going to fill in the blank. Oh, fun. Yeah. I love this game. In 10 seconds or less. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. I got it. If you miss the buzzer, then... There's a buzzer. Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> this is pressure. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Oh my goodness. If you miss the buzzer, you are going to punish the first class family, okay? 
And it's all about a matter of perspective, though, because what's punishment to one might be reward to another, i.e. a push-up. Like, that's punishment to me, but somebody on the fitness is like, yes, give me more. <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> exactly. So we'll start with something easy. Okay. What is your favorite um, movie? Go. Harry Potter, any of them. Oh, any of them. Okay. And Harry any Will Smith, um, except... There's one I don't like, but yeah, Harry Potter. So what's your favorite Harry Potter of the Harry Potters? Sorcerer Stone. I watched that. Um, yeah, I watched it. The first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's my favorite. Okay, okay. And he has six seconds to spare, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even, I didn't know what was going to come out because any of the movies that I love could have come out. Bad Boys, like I watched that at nauseum, but Harry <laughs> Potter came to mind because it combines everything, all the mm-hmm. movie types that I love. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, what's your favorite color? Go. Yellow. Mm-hmm. I don't wear a stitch of it. You won't see me in it, but it is my favorite. <laughs> That's so crazy. I think it would look really beautiful in yellow. So listen, I could tell you a story about me and color. Oh, I'll tell you this one funny one. So I, I'll make it quick. I came home one day because my husband was like, you wear so much black. Stop wearing black. So I came home, this was when I worked for someone else. So after work, I went to the mall, I bought a green suit. Why? Because I'd had a green dress that I got lots of compliments back on. So I thought, oh, a green suit. So I sat him down in the living room. I went in and changed. Girl, I was like, close your eyes. <laughs> I came in the living room. I was like, ta-da. He's like, you look like Kermit. I was like, really? <laughs> so I went back to my black. I was like, forget you. I'm not trying to please you. Please my <gasps> But yellow oh, is my favorite color. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to challenge you to oh, put no, on a you too. beautiful <laughs> yellow dress. Like, whatever kind of dress you want, whatever kind of dress you find flattering. If you don't like dresses, then I'll let you change it to something else. <laughs> but it has to be like a jumpsuit or something just where it's just you and yellow. Yes, mm-hmm. I do have to get, I was trying to get something yellow. It didn't quite work out for Web Summit because I went shopping with one of our speakers, um, Rola. She came over from England and we went shopping right as she got off the plane. It was awesome. And so she picked out this yellow, this hot pink dress because I told her I was wearing black mm-hmm. to Web. And she goes, you know, you're not. And so it was um, a hot pink dress and then a yellow jacket to go with a black uh, dress. And the hot pink went with a black jacket. So mm-hmm. it was four things that we bought. I didn't try them on. I just picked them up. Do you know what fit? What fit and I, what I wore to whip? The black jacket and the black dress. <laughs> I was trying to tell her. I was like, it's meant to be. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's all good. I will wear some yellow someday. We're going to have to try it on. I got sites. You need sites? I got websites for you. Oh, what is your favorite book? title and author go oh the one that comes to mind is who moved my cheese i was just talking about that on a podcast um i really that book is short i'm not i mm-hmm. you know, i listen to a lot of audiobooks um the year of yes is another great one anything by malcolm gladwell outliers you know um so that's the one with the match there's Outliers and there's Blink. No, not Blink. Is it Blink? Oh my goodness. What the other Malcolm Gladwell book? But yeah, Who Moves My Cheese? By Spencer Johnson. Spencer I Johnson. Have, yep, it's right over there. I haven't read it in a long time. It's probably due for a reread. Mm-hmm. But yes, I knew exactly what book you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your favorite song, artist, and title? Go. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to have to go back to my roots and pick Bob Marley and Three Little Birds. Oh, no, Could You Be Loved? It's not my fa- It's one of my favorite songs. Um, I love um, that and Father Figure by, <laughs> what's his name, George Michael. But I'll, I'll stick with the first one because it connects <laughs> me back to my roots. Nice, nice. Man, this I is so fun. Wondering. Do you do this with like, all oh, your guests? Oh. <laughs> yes. I love this. I love this so much. Go ahead. We play first class favorite things. Um, oh, I love it. And I'll, I'll tell you why it's so important in just a moment. After you say, what is your favorite activity to do to relax? Go. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Like doing nothing, intentionally doing nothing. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> I know. I was like, 
yeah, to relax, doing nothing or hanging with the family and laughing my head off. Like, because they're, they're funny. My sister Shiki especially is hilarious. Um, and I can understand that. Yeah. I but just understand. nothing. Just chilling. Because when you're busy doing all the things, it's nice to just turn your brain off. Yeah, do nothing. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite place to travel specifically? Go. Oh, Lindsay. Um, <laughs> favorite. It's a cop out feels like to pick Jamaica, but I love going there. But I have. Can I can I switch it a little and tell you my wish list? Portugal. Yes. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> I got the buzzer. Somebody's got to do a push up or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> we love you, 10 push ups. Oh, but we God. love you. <laughs> so sorry, you said guys. it's Portugal? I have Portugal, Greece, Costa Rica. Turks and Caicos look super fun. Super expensive, mm-hmm. but super fun. Um, yeah, so there's a list. Iceland, I've always wanted to go to Reykjavik and mm-hmm. see because I have a friend who's from there. Yeah, I have a Iceland. list. Is that what Reykjavik, Iceland? Yeah, I don't know how to spell it. Don't ask me. Uh-huh. The uh-huh. <laughs> Iceland. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Last one. What's your favorite food? Go. <gasps> Jamaican. Jamaican. Specifically. Oh, oxtail and rice and peas. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Listen, next time I see you, I'm going to. Can you make some oxtails, please? That's my mom. You're going to have to ask my mom for that. So she or my auntie B. That's it. I mm-hmm. don't ask me to make it. <laughs> okay. Anybody, anybody. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. But listen, I always love first class favorite things because if you are a member of our private Patreon community for the first class family, then dun da da da, you get access to the our list of first class favorite things. Oh, that's awesome. I know, right? So it's uniquely curated by all of our phenomenal guests. It's our reading list, our song list, you know, because some people prefer music over books, Um, our places to travel because we like to be well-cultured and well-experienced in this life, and then relaxing activities because we're all about self-care. Everything else is just... Oh, my gosh. I love that. That deserves a pom-pom shake. (laughs) looking for amazing products to help boost your first class lifestyle then head over to firstclasslifeshop.com where you can treat yourself to personal development books and workbooks lifestyle affirmation cards adult coloring books mugs notebooks hoodies t-shirts leggings and more All products were designed to help you master your mindset, walk in your purpose, and live your first class life because you deserve it. So treat yourself today at firstclasslifeshop.com. Again, that's firstclasslifeshop.com. So I know that we've been talking about a lot of things here. and Yes. I know that you exude living and creating your first class life. And so for those of you that are new to the show, creating your first class life is all about being intentional about creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You know, it's about shedding away those masks that we put on day in and day out. You know, the ones shame, fear, doubt, living up to other people's expectations, and instead showing up fully and boldly and confidently in who we are, flaws and all. So first class life is actually an acronym that stands for all of the different characteristics and skills that you want to embody into your lifestyle so that you can create a first class life. Now, if you want to know what those are, you can do one of two things. You can either go to firstclasslifeshop.com and buy the book, First Class Life, 10 Key Factors for Creating a Life Full of Purpose, Fulfillment, and Happiness. Or you can go listen to episode one of First Class Life Show, where I explain each of the factors in detail. But for now, we want to find out what the beautiful, lovely, lovely Keisha, which factor of first class life do you resonate with the most? So can I pick two? Faithful and confidence. Nice. Those are the two. Go ahead and explain why. You have to, because faithfulness, 
for me means that you trust yourself, you trust the process, even when it doesn't look like it should, um, especially if you're an entrepreneur, because you know you're going to have hard days. Well, maybe you don't know. And when that rude awakening hits you, it's your faith that's going to keep you going and connecting back to why you, did you even start in the first place? And then confidence, even when um, sometimes you have to build that within yourself through whatever means, um, music, just going after what you believe in and seeing what happens. Confidence is super important. So whatever you can do to build that confidence um, and funny enough to build your confidence, you're going to have to fall down. You're going to have to fail. And then you win through the failures and, you're, and then that builds your confidence. So those, that's why those two stand out to me. And I love that, Lindsay. And I love your mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. Building your confidence comes from the falling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You can't have one without the other because that's when you know <laughs> oh, I'm on the right track. Because let me tell you, when I first started to charge my event clients, I was like, oh, my Lord. I was working for a penny on the dollar. <laughs> mm -hmm. What was I thinking? I didn't Been have the there. confidence to know that I could ask for my price and, and know that I come with the goods. Mm -hmm. So that came from a bold step one day. I actually sent out uh, my price and then it came back. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me think back to the very first time I did like a full fledged coaching program and everything that was included. And it included a retreat. It included co-authoring a book and like all of the things that were a part of it, like I was literally working my ass off, okay? And mm -hmm. I love my clients, but the value that they got for the price that they paid mm -hmm. will never happen again. Like they were good to be in that first yes. group because, <laughs> because you got a million dollars worth of yes, value, okay? Priceless, true. really. Yeah. And you're paying pennies on the penny, not even pennies. Yeah. On the <laughs> right. And you know, but it's one of those fall downs that you get up from when you're stronger and your confidence grows from it. So it's not that we don't want to do that, but it helps us learn um, mm -hmm. where our worth and be confident saying, and also the confidence of the, con excuse me, the confidence of knowing not everything is for you and not every mm -hmm. client is for you. So if someone tells you no, okay, <laughs> you know, you just move right. on. Being okay with that, no. Yeah. So absolutely. let us know yeah. the other kind of no. Uh, how do you serve the world as a leader today? Tell us about what you do. I know we've we've talked about it some, but you know, share with us officially. <laughs> so I am a multi passionate entrepreneur, and my work is to help um, small business owners through my Women in Business Summit. So I, I am the founder of WIB Summit, Women in Business Summit. And I'm also an event planner. That's what I do full time. And I help nonprofits and corporate clients plan and execute their event. And I've shared, I love my Mary Kay <laughs> skincare <laughs> and face brought to you by my Mary Kay business. And I absolutely love because I've met some incredible women through it. And I, it was one, a very impulsive decision, but one that I love. And today's my anniversary. So yay, 13 years can be. Uh, yeah. so that's what, that's how I serve is just being of service in those areas, helping entrepreneurs grow, um, start and grow their business through Web Summit, helping my event clients, you know, conceptual, conceptualize and plan and execute their event, small, medium or large. And then through my Mary Kay, work with my team and work, you know, with my customers to provide them with the best service for skin gear and color cosmetics. That is my life. And then, you know, I'm a stepmom, I'm a daughter and all of the other things. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. And then there's my idea box, Lindsay, which we're not even going to get into. This is my dream box with everything that I hope to one day. Listen, you might as well share. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, I'll, sh I'll share what the box looks like. Not tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, no, this is my. It's just so. At first, it says idea box, but then it's my dream box, and you know, it just has things in here. I'll come back on the show and share. <laughs> okay. There's one. There's one thing that um, I really want to work on, but it's so great. You know, I keep these note cards on my desk, so as as ideas pop into my head. I pop them into my dream box and then I go visit the dream box. I put a date on it. And then if it's something that I'm not passionate about any longer, I toss it 
Um, but yeah, this is, I keep this on my desk and I keep my dream box very close at hand um, and keep it moving. So. I love it. I love it. That's so nice. <laughs> it's it's, in, it's uh, important to keep dreaming and it's never, you know, you, it's like you hear it's never too late. Truly, it's never too late to mm -hmm. bring an idea to fruition. You know, just take the courage and try it out and you will learn along the way and you'll learn if you like it, love it or want to leave it. Mm -hmm. And it's all good. Yep. And you'll never learn those things until you actually take action to do yes. them. So absolutely. Absolutely. Gotta start. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let us know how we can reach you. How can the first class family connect with you, attend your events, buy some yes. Mary Let us know how we can find you on these internet streets. So what my all encompassing website is KeishaZulo.com. That has all the things that I do, event planning, web summit, and Mary Kay. So that is a great place to start and you can connect with me on LinkedIn is the best place professionally to connect with me. Um, I do have an IG, but um, that's Wibs, at Web Summit. I maintain that. That's a great, great place. Um, but yeah, to, to just reach me in general, just go to KeishaZulo.com. Nice. Yeah. And you know, don't worry, we will have that link in the show notes. <laughs> You can just click it. You know, I know sometimes we don't feel like typing stuff and that's okay. We got to come. <laughs> right. Just click the link. Yeah. Yes. But I'm happy so, to connect with you, your audience. And, you know, you, you've been just so amazing, Lindsay, and such a blessing in my life. And thank you for just this conversation. It really brought up some things. I didn't know what to expect because she doesn't <laughs> give you, she doesn't say here are the questions. We just flow and nope. have a conversation. And I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotta keep it organic because it's easy to sound robotic and to try oh. and fall into the script of what we think we should say yes. whenever there is a script. And mm -mm, we don't want that with the First Class yeah. Life show, okay? We want the real <laughs> yes. what is on your heart, what's on your mind, and what's needed in this time because it'll come out. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. I didn't expect to share some of the things that I did, but it's all good. I think yeah. someone's meant to hear it. And we appreciate you for sharing and being willing to show up and share with us. So thank you. Do you have any final words of advice on how we can go out and create our first class life full of purpose, fulfillment and happiness? Mm. So something I heard recently, it's not always about money. You know, everybody, has, especially if you're an entrepreneur, wants to be a millionaire or in seven figures, all of that, which is all it's great. It's but however, it's about checking in with yourself to make sure that what you're asking for is really what makes sense and what makes you happy because you might get to that million, but then you're, you don't have time. You're not sleeping. You're not seeing family. You're out of alignment with your values. So I, my advice, and it's something that I'm practicing now is to just check in and recognizing how you're feeling in the moment. You know, if you feel um, uneasy, why are you feeling uneasy? It could be a person. It could be, something that happened and writing it down, just being really self-aware and always, always continue to learn and grow, get out of your space or expand your space. You know, you hear get out of your comfort zone, just expand it, go to conferences, go to, you know, listen to things like this conversation that we're having, pour into yourself always, because I promise you that the people around you will be better for it and you will be better for it. So yeah, so that's my two cents. <laughs> And yeah. it was on my line. <laughs> I love you. Thank You're you so again great. for coming on and being the amazing guest that I knew you would be. Oh, and man. thank you, First Class Family, for tuning in. Because as I said at the top of the hour, I know that you can be doing anything in the world, but you are here with us. Tune in, helping you to maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. So make sure you share this episode out, share your insights, be sure to yeah. tag us on social media, and tune in next week for another episode of the First Class Life Show. Meanwhile, go out there and keep creating your first class life because you deserve it. Bye. Lindsay, you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. 
but please be sure to subscribe to the First Class Life Show. And don't forget to rate, leave a review, and join our private community so that we can continue to provide you with great personal development conversations to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You deserve it.